As countries around the world face such tough battles with illegal migrants, Australia's Operation Sovereign Borders is used as an example on how to combat these issues. I think it is a further absolute vindication of John Howard. Nobody thought he could do it and then nobody thought Tony Abbott could do it after Labor unpicked the solution. And everybody, you know, all the wiseacres in, you know, the then Fairfax media and the ABC and the Guardian and so on told us that this would blacken Australia's <laughs> reputation around the world. I forgot. And now you've got the European <laughs> Union, the most politically correct body on the planet, actually quoting Howard's words. And actually you hear this all over Europe and all over America. You hear speeches in Polish or Hungarian or whatever, and then you hear Operation Sovereign Borders <laughs> suddenly come out in English. And John Howard has been absolutely vindicated here by Ursula von der Leyen. What Prime Minister Abbott did then was the gold standard for what any democratic government ought to do in this situation. You either have a border or not. If you don't have a border, you don't have a country. Uh, Abbott recognised that, as other uh, Australian prime ministers have done as well, but he deserves a credit for that. And what he cr crucially realised was, again, the number of people who can come to Australia is infinite if you, will, if you just allow the mm. first ones. Now, unfortunately, the European leaders, much like the current administration in Washington, just doesn't seem to have the guts to do the necessary thing. It endlessly talks about, you know, the needs of the people coming, never about the needs of the people in the countries. You know, European taxpayers don't pay their taxes throughout their lives simply to support an endless welfare state for the third world mm. coming in. And it's not like Europe is just a landing craft of some kind. It's not just an aircraft carrier for the people of the world who want to come. It's a set of, it's a civilization, it's a set of nations, it's a set of peoples. And it cannot infinitely just imbibe millions and millions of people from the developing world. And unfortunately, until such a time as politicians in Europe get serious, like the Australian government did, this problem is going to go on and on. I just want to add one thing, if I may, which is this. As I say in The Spectator, it is salutary to notice that a politician like Matteo Salvini in Italy, who stopped the boats, refused to allow them to land, which is the correct policy, was prosecuted, has been prosecuted twice in Italy for that. He is treated as a criminal when he is the one that was doing the most basic and legal thing necessary. It makes you realise just what a brave and a good leader on this issue Tony Abbott of Australia was. Absolutely. He sent those boats back to Indonesia, they stopped coming. Nobody in Europe's got the guts to do that. And frankly, frankly, the more that arrive on Lampedusa and in southern Italy, the more that will cross the English Channel and come to us. So Keir Starmer can enjoy his day at the Elysee Palace with President Macron. It, it, what's he going to achieve? How is, how is doing a deal with Monsieur Macron on cross-channel migrants going to benefit us at all? And when he talks about, you know, a Labour government being closer to the European Union, well, they will demand that he signs straight back up for all the things that Brexit represented, which if Starmer was to promise to do, he'd lose all that northern uh, vote. So, so I'm afraid uh, that what happens in Europe has a profound effect upon us, whether we're members of the European Union or not, when it comes to migrants. But I promise you, we are heading into complete disaster here.